here today we're going to talk about farming materials uh, a lot of people have asked me how to farm ore, how i get so much of it and i decided to do a quick little video on it so in our hero squad we have archaeolo jess which is just a reskin of pathfinder jess so if you have pathfinder jess definitely level her up it doesn't matter well she actually has to be leveled up to a certain point for all her perks to be unlocked but what she has, I can't really show you right now because I'm in game. She has in the zone, which lets every so many hits with the pickaxe, um, you do an increase of damage in the pickaxe. So when you're by yourself, especially like I am right now, and you come across these llamas, you pick these llamas up, and with the in these in the zone perk, you can break the pick uh, the llama. With just with just by yourself not any help from your team so if you're really trying to farm ore and you're having a rough time trying to find it in the caves this is the way to do it you get pathfinder jess you grab a llama and there's a key here to breaking a llama because you really have to be on task hitting these llamas you have to be on target you really can't afford to miss any of the blue circles. You have to hit every single one of them, or else you have a chance of not uh, fully breaking that llama in time and not getting the ore out of it. So the key with that is, the closer you are to the llama when swinging your pickaxe, the better. As you can see, I'm as far as I can get to the llama. I've already missed a couple, but I'm as close as I can get, and they're all, I really don't even have to move my cursor around. She definitely can break a llama quicker than any other outlander so you definitely want to grab her um what else i have sl uh, slotted in my hero squad is an outlander like recon scout ac any of the recons uh loot find six extra chance to find double loot so as you're breaking up these llamas getting this ore and you're farming for this ore you have a six percent chance of finding or getting double the ore out of those llamas or mechanical parts quartz crystal uh, even material so that's what i have set up i also have set up in my tactical van um not vanguard soothie but shamrock reclaimer for his teddies they do eye beam damage it's just a really good tactical i like to slot in that tactical slot so as you can see i got some malachite here i am in twine peak so I'm not really sure why it gave me Malachite, but I'm not going to argue. I can always use it for trade. So I'm just going to go along and try to find another Llama or a cave really quick. Now I did talk in a video earlier. Oh, here's one right here. And we got some Obsidian. Yeah, her pickaxe is definitely stronger than any other Outlander or any other hero in general. So like I said, if you don't have Archaeolo Jess, you can get Pathfinder Jess. They are just a reskin of each other. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this llama down. And like I said, you want to get as close to this llama as possible. This one there. And as you can see, two Malachite there. Two Malachite there, so that's already four Malachite that I would have had to uh, run around and try to find a cave in hopes that there was Malachite in the cave. And sometimes there's a lot of llamas around the map, guys. Sometimes there's like five, six llamas around the map. Four ore llama, you know, six, twelve, eighteen, that's twenty-four ores right there. And if you're doing a Malachite mission or a Shadow Shard mission, Silver Ore mission, and you're also doing these llamas, you're going to get five or six, sometimes four, for completing the mission. So that's almost 30 malachite right there, and the malachite or ore that you find in the caves along the way. So you could come out with an easy 40 malachite, 40 obsidian ore out of a level, uh, silver ore, it's possible. You just, uh, it's, it's how many llamas are going to be around that map, and if you're going to get lucky and find ore in the caves. Sometimes there'll be dead caves around the map where you're just, you know, you're not getting lucky finding that ore. Oh, there's a, a bear right there. Okay, this cave's cleared out. I think I was just in here. 
a lot of material. I definitely forgot to put material in my storm shield storage before I started this video. But we're just moving along. Looking for those caves. We got our eyes wide. I think I seen something over here. The key is to doing everything around the map, guys. Even radar towers give you ore. There are some that give you ore. Uh, encampments give you ore. Just about anything. Rescuing survivors can give you ore around the map. You know, relay survivors. So definitely try. And it helps your bonus and your score at the end of the mission by doing stuff around the map. We're just going to... Break this tree. Yeah, my way tree. Oh shoot, we got Hus. That Mercury Madness. Definitely love having that equipped. All right. Now, what I was gonna do here is I was gonna go knock out this Shadow Orb. I think that's what it's called. Oh, is that a cave down there? Nope. Looks like a dead end. where I'm going here okay so it is down here so there's probably a cave whenever you see this on the map guys on the mini map this is uh, a mini mo a boss spawns out of this and it gives you a decent reward so you definitely want to knock these out and these are only found in caves usually so you definitely want to do this because if you're farming for ore and you see this on the map this is see here's a cave Now, I only have Pathfinder Jess at a 106, so she's not really strong. I'm used to rocking out a 130 hero. Alright, that time it was just nuts and bolts, but 31 nuts and bolts, you know, and that took me two seconds to uh, defeat that mist monster. But, and you also found a cave on top of it. I never pass up on coal, guys. I'm always trying to get coal. You can never have enough coal, and it's good for trade. And speaking of trading, guys, I have a lot of people messaging me saying they got scammed or their inventory got wiped out. Uh, there's only one way of really getting completely scammed out of all your stuff, and that's giving out your Epic password. And who really does that? So the best thing I can say is only trade with close, close friends that you play with a lot and that you trust. A lot of people out there, every other person, especially some in these clubs that you're in, are scammers. And there's just no point. You might as well go grind the uh, stuff yourself and the materials yourself instead of risking getting scammed out of a weapon. All right, I don't know why I'm doing this, guys. I'm trying to find some ore. Oop, Shadow Shard. Definitely going to farm that. Looks like there's a chest back here. Could be a mimic. Nope. Oop, and I'm full of material. Get rid of these weak level traps. I always scrap my traps, guys. If you're going around the map... And you, you're searching stuff, you're looting, and you find all these uh, low-level traps. You definitely want to scrap those and get the material from them. I see a lot of people that just leave them around the map. They give you nuts and bolts and herbs. It's really a waste. And it takes you two seconds to recycle them. So definitely scrap those. Same with guns. If you're doing a storm chest and you're farming storm chests specifically, which we'll be getting into in a little bit, you want to scrap those storm chest weapons because one they don't come with perks on them they are you can use them don't get me wrong you can't use the storm shield weapons but i scrap them to be honest with you guys because you get material and you get ore and mechanical parts out of them so if you're farming you know that's just the thing to do all right we have a storm chest over here guys so we're definitely going to knock that out while we see it on the map So many trees, like dodge and weave over here. Nope, I thought that might have been a llama, but it's not. Oh, we got a survivor. 
just to show you guys, since we're farming, we're gonna we're gonna save the survivor and see what he drops us. Throwing up my turrets. If you don't have your sentry turrets, I highly suggest using those. As you can see here, guys, I mean, I don't even see a hus anywhere. The turrets are just taking them down. I forgot what level this was. Let me see if I can't find a hus without it dying. 76 zone, okay. So we definitely should be finding some good ore. My buddy gave me this 130 uh, Viper energy. It's really nice. I've been loving it. Especially with my ranger. What goodies did you give us, bud? Oh, nuts and bolts again. Not really what I'm looking for, guys, because I really got a lot of nuts and bolts right now. I've been dropping them off to people. My storm shield storage is filled with nuts and bolts. I probably have 11,000 nuts and bolts altogether. So I've been definitely dropping those off to people just to clear my storage. I did just use my turret, so I'm definitely going to have to wait for my turrets to respawn. Oh, okay. Shadow Shard. Nice. Never have too much of that. I have about 400 right now, but I'd like to have like a thousand to tell you the truth, guys. Then I'd be sitting pretty. So, yeah, 400 on the dot after that. I could use some more sturdy just because a lot of my friends asked for it. That was a decent cave. Pick up that teddy fragment. Those are teddy fragments. Now, I keep forgetting for some viewers out there that haven't really played the game or are just starting to play the game, I really suggest an outlander. Not only when farming, but just in general for any kind of mission because they all have the teddy perk mostly. Some don't. So you can pick up teddies around the map and use those to help you out when fighting Huss. Plus, you get phase shift. Phase shift is awesome because, say this hus, well, he didn't really do it that time, but sometimes they'll put this slow field on you, and you can't move. You're like walking. You're trying to run, and you're walking like that, you know? Phase shift will get you right out of that every time. Any kind of trance that the hus puts you in, phase shift will get you out of it. And it gets you around the map pretty quick. So I love face shift so much, guys. A smasher's running at you. You can just face shift to the side as it's charging at you. And right off the map it goes if you do it just right. So we got probably like another minute and a half until my other turret responds so that we can do the storm chest. You definitely want tur two turrets for that if you have them. So I'm just going to go explore this area real quick to try to find another... Llama before my turret respawns over here. Looks like we haven't hit this cave yet. Oh, well maybe we have. I just didn't see this. I always try to get this quartz crystal too because if you don't use it now, as you get higher in the levels... Alright, we got some mist monsters here. As you get higher in the levels, you, all your guns and a lot of your traps are going to take that quartz crystal. So you definitely want to farm that when you see it. I farm any kind of crystal, guys, because you need it. You use it all the time, so why pass up on it? This is my founder's quick shot. I got a video on that, which is OG Ginger Ale um, Fortnite intro. If you guys enjoy Ranger or pistols, that's a definitely a video you guys should check out. So I hear the hus. I just don't know where they're at. Oh, there they are. Alright. Forgot to look at my chat. Alright, well, I don't think there's any more ore besides that little obsidian I see over there. Alright. Oh, this taser face came out of nowhere. All right, 
Alright, there we go. Now, we've almost explored the whole map. I just got my second turret back. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go do the storm chest I was talking about doing. Just because that's the biggest loot in the game, guys. If you're especially farming for ore or anything, you definitely want to farm storm chests. It is nice to have a buddy when you are farming because the more power the better and the more people you have on that storm chest or anything like a radar tower, an encampment, it's going to increase the reward. You're going to get a bigger reward the more people that help you. So definitely remember that. I didn't know that about the radar towers. A buddy of mine stopped me one day and said, hey, let me, you know, the more people that work on this, the bigger reward. Because usually we spread out, we go do our own thing, you know what I'm saying? Everyone's knocking out their own radar towers. So, just a little insight. Alright guys, I'm definitely going to whip out my Dam Buster here. You definitely want an explosive weapon in your hands, just in case things don't go right. Oh my gosh, alright, throwing up my first turret. I saved my second turret until I hit that 25 mark. That way I have another turret till the end. Okay, seven enemies, not what I'm looking for yet. Twelve enemies, throwing up second turret. Nineteen, we need twenty-five. We got thirty seconds to go, we're definitely good on time right now. Ooh, wow, I'm just missing all over. Throw my slow field. Just because. Throwing out another Teddy. Nice. We got it, guys. <laughs> Alright, could have done a little better there. Oh, wow. Looks like I did run out of time, guys. Um, I'm actually kind of... Well, I'm not glad it happened, but I can show you guys if you really don't knock out those husks and that on that timer, you're only going to get one chest reward or one uh, prize. You're only going to get one. You get two if you complete that miss monster, uh, beat those two miss monsters. So we only got one uh, one present. That's all right, though. It's better than nothing. We're going to scrap that, see what else we got here. We probably didn't get a lot. It's not as much as we should have got. All right, so we got the storm chest knocked out of the way. Now, I'm just going to go around and look and see if I can't find a couple more llamas. There's an encampment up here. Let's see what kind of reward it is, guys. It's ore, okay, so it's definitely going to drop us probably, hopefully some obsidian. There's a miss monster. Always knock those out first, guys. I talked about that in my last video. You want to get the guys that are killing you out of the way, for sure. And these ankle biters. Alright. That was a good one. Alright. Moving along, guys. I see another campment up ahead. There is a east part of the map that we haven't explored yet. So I'm going to go check that out. Most of the time, those llamas that you find around the map, they pop up. They'll be purple around the map as you pass them. I don't know if it was the last update, but I've been noticing that they, they only really pop up if you get really close to them. Usually, you just be able to pass them throughout the map, and it would show them on, the, on, your, on your big map. Now it's... Maybe they did change it. I'm not sure. I think it's honestly just a glitch. We got another encampment over here. Looks like some crafting supplies. So we're going to do this one. These cowboys knocked them out too, guys. Right. Never have enough duct tape. Actually, I have a lot of it. Oop, we got a cave over here. I think we already knocked this one out, though. So 
So we're gonna move along. Oh, we got a survivor. I got your back, bud. Don't worry about that. Man, those shield guys, they last forever now. Ever since they updated them, they definitely brought their their health up a lot on those shield, on those little purple guys. They take forever to bring down now. Oh no. Keep running, man. Don't run into the hus. Man, this thing takes forever to reload. Should have threw a reload speed on it. But we got him. He's rescued. Char Black. I hear a lobber somewhere. You are gonna die. Alright. Some sleek over there. That was nice. Okay. And you can also do these blue ghost siphons, guys. It will give you ore. That is another one you can do. So I'm just going to do this right here just to do it. Since we're kind of doing a tour out on the farming. Doing everything you can across the map. Even if you fail, and say you're doing them for blue go, when you fail, it still gives you two blue go no matter what. So they're definitely worth doing, especially if you're trying to get blue go around the map for your mission. Some people will start them up, and they'll just let they'll let them fail. You know, they'll they'll start them and they'll walk away to the next one, start that one up, and by the time they get back to this one, this one is already destroyed and has two blue go waiting. So a lot of people will do that too. But then you don't get the reward if you don't complete it. Oh, there goes the smasher. Ooh, he just went down. I love taking down smashers. I don't think there's anything else out there that really satisfies me like taking down a smasher. Ooh, that's what I was talking about with that face shift, guys, you know? Oh. We failed. That's alright. We're just gonna take the smasher out anyway. Um, I definitely like to take out those smashers, guys, and the mist monsters around the map. Because they can also drop ore. Which goes back to the farming ore and how many you can actually collect around the map just by doing stuff around the map. Oh, another encampment. Okay, this is a good one to do. This has the chest symbol. This is a really good one to do. You can also get ore out of the chest symbol encampments. I didn't, man, I didn't put my adrenaline rush heal on. I took that off because I was actually rocking out a constructor earlier on a high level mission. Alright. Sweet deal. Alright, so... As you can see with the caves that we did pass so far, guys, we did find some Shadow Shard and some Obsidian. I always like to whack the troll instead of shoot it. Save the ammo as much as you can, guys. Ooh. Now, these guys give you a reward, too. It's not big. I'm pretty sure it's just material. But they also give you two blue ghosts. So these trolls are really... Really, it's really easy to get blue go from them. So if you see those around the map, when you go to pick up a blue go and the troll comes out, knock out this as well. Quick way to grab blue go. Okay, moving along. We're getting... We, it looks like we explored the whole map, guys. I'm not seeing any more llama fragments around the map. I think this is the cave that I already went in before, and it is... So that is one way that you guys can farm for ore. Oh, there's a quartz crystal here. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to leave. Oh, 
Oh, just when I was about to back out of the mission, guys. Uh, like I said, really make sure you grab all the ore and explore everything that you can. It's easy to to pass some stuff up, like I just did right here. There's some shadow shard on the wall of the cave. Just looks so pretty sitting there. <laughs> Right, gonna get some of this quartz over here. I think I'm sitting on a pretty decent amount of quartz right now. Let me go check out what I'm actually carrying here. Yeah, see, I, I at least have 786, so that's a decent amount. I do need to get rid of some of this adhesive resin. I have way too much of it. If you guys are overstacked on that, you really don't use a lot of this stuff. So I would definitely drop some of it or try to give it away to a buddy, maybe. All right. And moving along, can never pass up on that coal. We're gonna farm some of this. Red toolbox sometimes have ore in them too. Anything that's in a cave that you can search, search it because uh, likely it's gonna have ore in it. Just kind of spam building here to do some farming. Nothing wrong with that. And always watch your backpack, guys, because it's easy to forget about you being full in your backpack. And then you end up dropping stuff around the map that you think you're farming for and collecting. And there's nothing worse than dropping some Shadow Shard or mechanical parts or n nuts and bolts even. Because when you're low on those, you know, they, they're they valuable as well. Oh, wow. Okay, we're getting out of there. Okay, so it looks like I farmed everything in sight over here. I'm going to drop down here. Ammo boxes. Those will give you herb. Some coal. Alright. Hopefully this has some good loot. Traps. All right, and looks like this cave is pretty much done. Oh, wow, just when I thought it was over, there's some obsidian up here. So like I said, just exploring those caves, guys, I found a decent amount of ore in there. Okay, that's where we're getting up. And that's when you really wish you were a ninja but the ninja can't collect llama fragments and isn't really a good farmer. That double jump is nice to have though, I'm not gonna lie to you on that. So, oop, it's, a, it's not a llama, I thought it was, it kinda tricked me there. You hear that sound, if you ever hear that wah 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 sound, that's usually a llama fragment, so go over there and grab it. There's not one more llama left around the map somewhere. Definitely not seeing one, guys. Sometimes, like I said, there's five or six. Sometimes, sometimes there's not any at all. So it all just depends. But, all right, we're going to go ahead and leave this mission right here. Now, when you back out of a mission, you do get to keep all the stuff that you farm for. So don't think that you'll lose your stuff just by backing out of the mission and not um, trying to complete it. And you always want to set your privacy, uh, your privacy to private because you don't want people joining your mission, especially if you're a low level and you're a higher level mission. Higher levels will get in the mission while you're farming. And not only is other people there farming the material around the map and you don't get all of it to yourself. And really, that's what you need to be doing is setting your privacy to private so you can farm the whole level. You know, you don't got to worry about other people taking all those chests that are able to be found on the map and the ore in the caves. Because usually that's what people go to first. They want to grab that ore and they want to grab anything valuable around the map quick, which leaves you with the scrapings. So... Definitely try to set that privacy to private. Okay, and now we're going to do just a Candy Valley map real quick, guys. Go 
the desert. We're gonna try to try to find one that's a van mission. And I like to go in the desert. The desert seems to have more caves than uh, Route 99 does. Okay, that's a Thunder Route 99. Thunder Route 99 looks like all of this is over here. That, okay. Okay, this is a good one right here. We're in the desert. It's a Cat 4, so it doesn't have a timer on it. We're gonna go ahead and jump into this real quick. Now, I know a lot of my friends are in Caney Valley, or not so much Caney Valley, but they're in Stonewood and Plankerton. These deserts and Caney Valley maps aren't available to you yet until you obviously get into Caney Valley. But the map before me, you guys, it's really similar to the Stonewood and the Plankerton missions, all where those caves were located at. All the maps are, are really similar, so... Just go around the edges of the map. That's the best thing that I could tell you. Always go around the edges of the map first because that's where those caves are usually going to be. Obviously, they're in the middle too, but mostly on the outside of the map. That's definitely where you want to start first. Finding those llama fragments, looking for those caves. By the end of, by the, end of the match, you're going to have at least 20 ore on, on, uh, under your belt. So that's definitely what you want to do. Now, in one of my videos in the past... I'm talking about Striker AC uh, in the Fortnite intro video. I break it down farming with Striker AC. Now he's really good to use if you're looking for mechanical parts, guys. Pathfinder Jess is more about ore and crystal. So if you're using Striker AC with his anti-material punch every five seconds, you're doing it right, don't get me wrong. I love Striker AC because I go through mechanical parts more than anything in the game. So, just know if you're, if you're farming for mechanical parts, Striker AC or material like brick, wood, and metal, you're obviously gonna stack up material a lot faster with that anti-material punch than a pickaxe. But when you're farming for ore or any other kind of loot, like cave-wise, Oh, here we go. There's a llama fragment right here, guys. We're going to throw it down, and you always want to make sure you have your pickaxe out. As you can see, I missed three times already, guys, and I was still able to break the llama with her. Now, it is a 6% chance to find double loot, guys, so not every time will you get four pieces of ore out of the llama. But there I got a couple, so that was nice. Now, listen guys, the best thing you can do if you if you are an outlander and you're trying to set up out for the first time, when you're in a match with with a full lobby or someone else, and someone's trying to break a llama with you, someone throws down a llama, the best thing you can do, guys, is at the end of the llama, before it's about to break, back away from the llama and let the person who threw down the llama grab their ore. That's a big deal, especially when you get into Candy Valley and in Twine Peak. Because I know a lot of people that think, oh, this guy wants me to break a llama, and they just they take your ore. And that's the whole reason that person has thrown down that llama, is for that ore specifically, and they need help breaking the llama, guys. And most of the time, if you back away from the llama after it breaks, they're going to let you grab what they don't want out of that llama, or sometimes be generous and give you some of the ore out of it, just for being cool. So, you know, everyone hates scammers now. That's kind of almost scamming ore from someone, so you definitely want to try to back away from that llama and let that person grab that ore out of that. All right, now we're just going to find a quick, a quick, quick cave. I don't have a lot of time left on the broadcast, so we're going to go around the outside of the map like I was talking about earlier. We're also looking for llama fragments, guys. Oh, we got one right here. Love it. Try to save your bullets. You can always throw up a turret or... Oh, shoot. <laughs> I thought I was throwing down a teddy there, guys. My bad. Oh, almost let a llama go to waste, and I just had picked it up. That happens to me all the time. Sometimes I'll forget that I even have a llama. 
And I'll accidentally throw it down in battle. Ooh, we just broke that one, guys. So there we go. We got some quartz crystal there. That was two of that. We got two malachite. So that was four ore again, guys. That was a good one. Alright, we're full of material. Whoa, I forgot to put it in my storage again, guys. Oh, I hate looking at all that material wasted. Alright, so we're going to go around the map. Found two llamas already, which is awesome. This target's a tricky one. Keep searching. Should be on my hoverboard. Let's hop on our hoverboard. Oh, we got an encampment over here. Uh... Nice. We're still going to do it. Bring it. Now I got my teddy. Now I can throw down my teddy. Alright, and I don't really want to use my 130 guns on this, guys, because I really don't need to. This is, um, in Candy Valley, these guys aren't really that hard. So I'm going to whip on my 106 weapons. And if you guys have this Dragoon, a buddy of, of mine, actually, that I met today, through another buddy, he showed me this Dragoon. I showed him my Husbuster with all uh, God rolled perks and with the double reload speed. And then he showed me his Dragoon with double reload speed. He's actually thinking about taking the reload speed off and putting on some crit. But man, this gun knocks them back. I love this gun so much. I'm gonna upgrade it myself after he showed me what it what it can do. It knocks back Smashers. It, it'll even knock back Smashers. And as you can see, it's got, it's got rolled, it's got energy, it's got 30% plus damage, and the reload speed, which is really necessary, because it just, with shotguns, sometimes that reload speed can be a drag, especially in a heated battle. So you'll definitely see people putting on double reload speed on their shotguns a lot, because, oh, we got a cave right here, because it definitely helps. And overall does more damage, too. Oh, wow. Looks like we got someone trying to pick a fight over here. And, yep. It's a pro painter. Nice. That shotgun really took him down there. We're going to see what we can find loot-wise. Now, remember, guys. Search before you break. I can't be any more bigger on that than I already am. Because a lot of times you will find ore in random places. It'll be in garbage. Like, oh, that just happened. Wow crazy right I was just talking about that but look I found some ore right there in a barrel oh I didn't mean to throw my slow field down there that'll give you mechanical parts usually survivor hangouts like this survivor hangouts they will give you all the necessary materials that you're trying to farm for there'll be herbs usually in a crate looking thing you want to search that bacon will be in here if you're farming for bacon and I, I know that I use bacon a lot and I'm always trying to farm for bacon you can always find it right in here in their survivor hangouts or shelters. They're little survivor shelters, however you uh, so be it or, or call it. All right, so we're moving along. Oop, Ibris. Oh, we're going to have to break this floor. And that's the cool thing about these Candy Valley Caves, guys. Break the walls. Break the walls everywhere. If you come across a dead end, Start breaking these wooden floors because 9 times out of 10, there's going to be secret passageways all throughout these caves. Now, I had a buddy of mine asking me earlier when he seen a screenshot of my backpack and asked me how I had so many power cells. He was freaking out. How do you have so many power cells? I got 659 power cells, guys. And I, I, I can only say this. Not only from a couple of my buddies when I... Because I did just run out a little bit ago. I had a buddy hook me up and give me a, a little bit. But those gnomes, the gnome that I just smashed over here. There's a certain gnome out there. I, I'm not specific on which gnome it is. But it drops a power cell when you break it. So if you ever see a gnome um, in a match, if you're farming or just doing the mission, break the gnome. Because 9 times out of 10, it'll be a power cell so sometimes you can find two or three power cells a game especially in the city there's a map where there's a building full of pumpkins and gnomes everywhere I don't know if you guys have ever seen that location but it's full of pumpkins and gnomes inside this little building area and I think there's lawnmowers in there too a few lawnmowers and and such 
etc. Stuff like that. So definitely, if you're trying and you run out of power cells, or you're just trying to farm for some power cells, definitely try to do these. I, it might be a. I think it's a city mission, guys. I might be mistaken on that. But there's a little shop area where there's a lot of gnomes, and you can definitely grab two or three power cells out of the area, let alone around the map. Alright, and if you ever see these ducks, they look cool. They actually break into duct tape. So if you ever see those around Candy Valley, you want to pick those up. Up oh, some obsidian, that was nice. Only got single obsidian, was hoping to get a little double. Alright, I'm glad I ran into this, guys. I just found a level 5 chest. Now... With these level 5 chests, if you have any teammates um, that are with you in the match, you definitely want to make a call out in the team chat or send them a message and say, loot 5 chests. Now, why you're doing that is because sometimes, not always, these will drop evolution material drops, which are those purple little circle container looking things that give you drops of range, uh, storm shard, or lightning in a bottle. They will give you any of those materials, which are nice. And the higher levels that you are farming or doing, they're going to give you more of those evolution materials. Now, if you're thinking, what's the point? I'm farming. I'm going to lose this anyway. You will not lose this evolution drop. It stays with you even if you lose the match. So you definitely want to make a call out to your buddies and then open this while everyone's standing around. Now, sometimes it will give you that. It will give you schematic cachet. But, so, but if your buddies aren't standing around it, they're not going to get the reward. So definitely try to make that call out, guys, because you'd want someone to do it for you, you know? So, wow, that was a great find. And we and some Shadow Shard on top of it, so awesome. And like I said, try to open up anything around the, uh, around the caves that you can search. And oh, I'm glad I found this too, guys. To end the video right here, we find a Super Stash chest. Now this, you don't need any of your teammates around in order for them to get this reward. It automatically gives it to uh, gives it to them. So if you're ever running around the map and you see all this material that starts floating around your head like you had searched something, it was someone opening a uh, super stash chest. And it gives you a lot of stuff, guys. It gives you a really decent amount of loot. Alright, so... Oh, and we're full on material again. Or full on backpack space. You can never have enough backpack space, I swear. I'm actually gonna... Uh, I'm gonna leave that, because I like using that randomly. Alright. Pick this up and scrap this bad boy. Alright guys, uh, just a quick recap before we end this broadcast. Now, in the Hero Squad, you can use Pathfinder Jess or Archeolo Jess. They are the same character. You're looking for in the zone with the pickaxe to be able to break the llama. Um, a lot of different outlanders have in the zone, so you can break llamas by yourself with different out outlanders, but they have to have in the zone or else you will not break that llama in time and you won't get that aura, that llama, that's really important. In my squad bonus, I have Recon Scout AC. For the loot find, any recon, e uh, recon scout eagle eye. Another one is you can actually put a, well, I was going to say Pathfinder Jess, but she has work work. She doesn't have the loot find. So any recon, definitely want that extra 6% 6, 6 loot find. And any kind of tactical that would fit with your outlander. Um, for instance, I am using Shamrock Reclaimer with uh, Bear Stare. Teddy now fires eye beams that deal 22 base energy damage and you can definitely tell the difference between the eye beams and without the eye beams so I slot him in there and he's a 130 hero on top of it I get a decent amount of health for slotting him and doing a quick recap going around the map finding those llama fragments you definitely want those llama fragments break those llamas get those ore around the cave trying to find all those different ore in the cave and if you can the mission that you're doing if you can do it by yourself or with some buddies try to make it an ore mission for malachite as a reward for the mission or shadow shard or silver because that just adds to the ore on top of it at the end of your mission or at the end of your farm 
And if you guys have any questions about farming or any other questions about the game, feel free to message me on Xbox, OG Ginger Ale. I am on Instagram and YouTube, OG Ginger Ale. Uh, it's been fun, guys. Uh, I appreciate everybody tuning in on Twitch and YouTube. I hope you guys have a great night, and until next time.